Okay, time for me to find me a good old deal on eBay. I'm gonna search something odd, that way I can find it. Something no one else searches, so it's gonna be rare to find. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, what is this? KFC bucket Star Wars pen. What is this? Let me click on this. Episode one, it's gotta be worth a lot of money. Same old crap all the time. Huh, hey there, didn't hear you click in. Oh, so I was just doing what most people do, right? Checking eBay for some Star Wars toys. Hardly ever find any good deals anymore. But I'm going to tell you a story about a collector that did what many of us do. Let's say you're home alone. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. You got your computer in front of you. What do you do? You head over to eBay to see if you can stop that. You head over to eBay to see if you can find some Star Wars vintage deals. Well, this is a story by a collector that did just that. But it turns out, what he thought was a bunch of crap and a chicken bucket was a lot more. It was Star Wars and Kenner toy history. Let's take a look. In the mid-2000s, collector Ross Cuddye was doing what most of us do late at night and bored, searching on eBay for cool vintage Star Wars stuff at a great deal. When he found the listing, Star Wars vintage catalog, trailers, blueprints, and more, he figured he'd click on it and check it out. He figured it would be just the Kenner catalogs and maybe the blueprints that were released in 1978. However, the photo on the auction only showed what Ross referred to as a lot of crap. It even had a photo of an unused KFC chicken bucket. Also in the photo was some of the fast food toys from the prequels and some of the vintage Burger King glasses. One thing that really caught his eye was a 1978 Toy Fair catalog, as that would be the year the first Star Wars toys were shown. It was a seven day auction and the starting bid was $100. He placed the bid and forgot all about it. That was until about seven days later when he got a notice that he had won the auction for $100 plus $35 shipping. No, oh, I forgot about that auction. How much did I pay for it? Oh, $35 shipping. Oh. A couple of weeks later, a large box showed up at his house. Picking it up, he heard the sound of broken glass and what sounded like a bunch of crap just thrown in the box. I have a package for you. Sounds broken. Most likely, sir. He took it inside and opened it up to find about what he figured. That crap from the photo was now in a box in his house. And yes, even the KFC bucket was in the box. And inside the KFC bucket was those Burger King Star Wars glasses. Broken. Except for one, they actually turned out to be the one that Ross needed. But I really hope it didn't smell like chicken. He took all the crap out of the box and started to see what he had. A small film reel of one of the Star Wars trailers. And there it was, the 1978 Toy Fair catalog he had hoped for. Taken out of the box, he saw it was in good shape. And he felt with the catalog, the trailer, and the Burger King glass he needed, it was worth $135. He started to look closer at the 1978 catalog. And that's where he found inside an old folder. Inside that folder he would find old papers that seemed like they were made from the Silver Age comic book era. And they also would have that old musty smell. Once pulling the papers out, he realized this must be the blueprints that was talked about in the auction. And these were not the ones that were released in 1978. As he unfolded the papers and started to look at them closer, he realized they were from Kenner. They were not exactly blueprints, but rather a change of notice form from Kenner, telling the toy designer what needed to be changed. One of these change forms was about the changing of the original lightsaber. The other was a notice that changed the Tuscan Raider Gaffy Stick. It seems at first Kenner was going to release this as dark blue, but was changing the color now to brown. One of the other request notice changes was for the Jawa figure to be given a cloak. But there was one more thing inside the envelope. A very early project sheet. A handwritten list of Star Wars toys planned for release. And on that list, for the first time ever, Anyone outside of Kenner saw that there was, at a time, very early on, plans for a Governor Tarkin action figure. The date on this sheet was fall 1977. He knew what he had was very early Kenner papers, but he really didn't think all that much of it. Figured it was stuff that the collector market already knew or had seen. Just to make sure, he started to do a little research. Checking with people on the Rebel Scum message board. Combing over the Star Wars collector's archives but he really didn't find anything and soon moved on with his life. And that was it. Until Celebration 4 in May of 2007. 
At the collector's panel, Frost met with one of the collectors on the board, John Killerman, and showed him the papers he had. John looked him over, hand on the back, and said they looked legit to him, and told him that he might want to show it to that collector guy running the panel. And that guy was collector Todd Chamberlain. Todd and the other collectors on the panel knew when they saw the names of former Kenner employees on the papers, they were real. Ross told Todd that he could show them at the Collector Row Show segment during the panel, and Todd agreed. After showing them off during the panel, a buzz around the collectors started up. They were real, and no one had ever seen them before. But it seems a few did know about them. For some time, someone unknown had been trying to sell them for the last few years. They were asking $225,000, which got ignored by the collector community. Sure, it was a rare find, a part of Star Wars and Kenner history, but $25,000? That was asking way too much. Soon the seller and the paperwork disappeared. That was until Rawls showed up at Celebration 4 with his priority mail envelope. Some of the collectors talking to Rawls even said they recalled the auction and thought of bidding on it themselves just for that 1978 Toy Fair catalog. So remember, when it's 3 a.m. and you're looking around on eBay and you find that list that looks like nothing but crap, Maybe, just maybe, there's some old forgotten history mixed inside that crap. I never find anything like that on eBay. The only surprise I ever got eBay was an autographed used condom of Jim J. Bullock. But that's for another video. Anyway, that's a look at a collector that thought he was buying crap and a chicken bucket. And it turns out, he let us all learn a little bit more about Star Wars history. One of those change forms I talked about was about the Jawa cape, how it went from no cape to final cape to cloth cape. I did a whole video based on that change form, so if you want to check that out at the end of this video, I'll put it in one of those boxes right there. And check out the other box also, or the playlist. But anyway, that's a look at the collector that found history. Tell me, did you ever find anything good on eBay? Did you get some great deal on eBay? I tell you, there was a time where every once in a while you could find something, a deal, but it seems like now anyone that sees anything Star Wars throws it up on eBay at a high market price as it is. Or that's just my luck. But let me know in the comments below about some deals you found or maybe some deals you should have gotten and you came back, somebody else got it and you kidding yourself you didn't buy it. Uh, let me know all that. Let me know more. Let me know anything you want me to know in the comments below. And as always, you can subscribe to this channel or hit like so I know you like my content. I'm not really sure why I said or. I mean, you can do both of them. And go to Patreon, become a Patreon supporter, become a member of the YouTube page. And all that helps the channel out, helps it get better. I, know. I agree, it can't get any better. But maybe it can, we'll see. Well, until the next video, we'll talk again soon. Junk Man. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.